fantastic to see you all here this evening. So thanks a million for so many of you coming along. This is our first sort of large gathering since that historic election uh, 36 days ago, if I'm counting the days. Um, but 36 days ago since that assembly election, where we know that people came out in such huge numbers and voted for change. And they voted for the parties and gave us all a mandate to get down to business, form an assembly and get things moving. And I want to thank each and every one of you because it was your hard work and your effort that actually helped to achieve all that we achieved and to deliver a performance that reflects that wider change, that sentiment of change, that public attitude change and the shift in politics on our island. So thank you so much for all of that. Having received an overwhelming endorsement by the electorate for our positive vision for the future, it's now our top priority to deliver for the whole of the community. That's irrespective of your religious background, your political or social background. Our commitment is to make politics work through partnership and not through division. I said this throughout the campaign and I and we wholeheartedly believe in everything that we have said. Our collective mission, mission is to work together to solve the problems that are facing this society. That is tackling health waiting lists. That's getting people access to a GP whenever they need it. That's funding our mental health services, uh, cancer treatment, building affordable homes to meet growing demand and delivering the best possible education for our young people and creating decent jobs for all. The democratic outcome of that election must be respected and not for one single day longer is it excusable for the DUP to continue their boycott of the Assembly, of the Executive and of the North South Ministerial Council, where they are denying the electorate the democratic representation to which they are entitled and they are hampering the spending power of our ministers to deal with the rising cost of living crisis and also hampering the ability to agree a three year budget that would fund our health service. <coughs> Conor Murphy, our finance minister, is sitting with £435 million to be spent to put into the pockets of workers and families as the cost of living crisis continues to rise and that cannot be released because of the DUP's blockage. It is utterly contemptible, it's also cruel, it's self-serving of the DUP to prevent those who are struggling to make ends meet, struggling to put food on the table, struggling to heat their homes by blocking the formation of executive. To tell those workers and families that they cannot get the supports they're entitled to because of the protocol. Well, that doesn't wash. It doesn't wash for us and it doesn't wash for workers and families. Here's the home truth. Boris Johnson has made a complete hames of things. As a British Prime Minister, from he went in the door of number 10 Downing Street until he's pushed out of it again. Our interests are certainly not his interests, or that of the Tories. And by our interests, when I say our interests, I mean all of the people here, our local political democracy, our peace process, our progress and transformation on the island over the past quarter of a century. They have no concern for our future, our shared future. Boris Johnson's sole interests are in holding on to power and to serving the sectional interests of the London elite. The DUP have again saddled up to the Tories and they've done it before and of course they will never learn. But what's at play is that Boris Johnson wants to clutch on to power for as long as he can get away with it. The DUP and a faction of the Tories with whom they're aligned want to squeeze from him what they can, while they can, on the Brexit protocol. A protocol that is necessary and a direct result of the hard Brexit that the DUP and the Tories championed. The majority of MLAs that were returned on the 5th of May election support the protocol and we support it because it is working. Yes, it can work better, but only through joint EU-British government solutions is that possible. It gives the North access to both the British market and the EU market of more than 500 million consumers, the biggest and most important and powerful trading bloc in the world. There's no cost to us to be within the single market, but there certainly is enormous cost if we are not. Our economy is now outperforming England, which is evidenced by the government's own economic data. Local businesses and producers are flourishing and filling gaps in the market. And the all-island supply chain, which is sustaining jobs and creating new employment. Boris Johnson knows that to gamble the protocol is to breach international law and to jeopardise the British government's agreement with the EU on their withdrawal and future trading relationships with colossal political and economic impact. The threat of unilateral action by the Tories to legislate and to breach international law serves nobody's interests anywhere at any time. With 40% of, of his own AMPs diverging in this week's confidence vote, he has big choices to make in the interest of his own country and people. 
but the absurdity of people on this island being subjected to this figure of disrepute is untenable. He is driving an anti-Good Friday Agreement agenda, which is disingenuously wrapped up in a pro-agreement rhetoric. We all know, everybody in this room knows, that the protocol is a proxy for political unionism to undermine the Good Friday Agreement, because their perpetual veto is gone, because the balance of power has irreversibly shifted. Sinn Féin is the largest party, and I am the First Minister in waiting. And And so the DUP are holding Boris Johnson down and holding power sharing and equality up because they cannot bring themselves to accept the new and present realities which we face. Boris Johnson and Brandon Lewis are given the DUP cover and let's be clear, the political stability of the North cannot be a hostage to the Tory infighting, Westminster chaos and continued DUP disruption. They want the past but that's no longer available to them. From this platform this evening, I want to send our solidarity to the Hart and McAreevy families. <laughs> what they have been subjected to by a hate-filled, sectarian, misogynistic cabal has left people right across the community very, very angry. But also with a question in their minds, which is, how deep does this go? How do we move our society forward when grown-up men and women, parents with children of their own, display such bigotry? That's a question on many people's minds. I want to acknowledge all those employers and associations who have stepped up and have taken action against this behaviour and the individuals responsible who were exposed. When the Assembly does get up and running, we will support incitement to hatred legislation being introduced, which will make it a criminal offence to do what was done last weekend. As I said, those who hanker for the past and attempt to disrupt the present and threaten the future must realise that our society is moving forward and we will not be dragged backwards. This week I've heard unionist leaders and others talk about the coming weeks, about it being a long, hot summer in the context of anti-protocol protests. As political leaders, that's reckless behaviour. It's reckless language. And as political leaders, we must stand united appealing to all those concerned to stop engaging in any such violence and refrain from further threats of violence. The type of futile security threats that we witnessed recently in North Belfast won't deter us, won't deter us from driving forward. We can always solve all of our problems and our concerns, but only do that through democratic politics. And the PSNI must be proactive in dealing with these incidents which are being driven by loyalist paramilitaries. The minority trying to draw us back will not win. Our focus, everybody in this room's focus, is on the future. It's about our young people. It's about building something better for them. But to move forward, it also means that we must deal with the past. And the British government's abandonment of the Stormont House Agreement and their introduction of an amnesty legislation amounts to a judicial blackout with the denial of truth and justice for scores of families being impacted by what they have done. The legislation is fatally flawed and that's the words of the Human Rights Commission. So let me say again tonight, we will continue to stand with each and every family and continue in their campaign for the right to truth and to justice. <laughs> Many of you will probably no doubt have joined the Dram Jarg rally in this city a few weeks ago where tens of thousands marched for Irish language rights and act Gaelic. And this week, the Irish language legislation and wider identity pass, or package passed its next stage in the Westminster Parliament. And for the very first time, the first time, the official recognition of the Irish language in this state w will be law once this completes its passage. And Irish language... <laughs> An Irish language commissioner will be appointed thereafter and a repeal of draconian laws preventing the use of Irish in the courts will be taking effect. This has been a long time coming and we're going to continue to drive this project over the line. Joining us here this evening, I'm very happy to say, are our newly elected Sinn Féin mayors, deputy mayors, chairs and vice chairs from across Belfast, Oma, Fermanagh, Mid-Ulster, Uri Armagh, 
down Derry and Strabane and Causeway Coast and Glen. So Tina, Cora, Barry, Sandra, Aoife and Kitty, you're all very welcome. And whenever... Um, whenever we say, whenever I have said that I would be a first minister for all, just like that, our mayors and chairs will also be a first citizen for all of the people that they serve and they will work really hard on behalf of workers and families and for everybody in the community in which they serve. Aharja, our party is growing across Ireland and there is no office that is out of reach for us. There's nothing that's out of bounds for Sinn Féin and those whom we proudly represent. Since the election, both myself and our party leader, Mary Lee MacDonald, we've been in London, We've been in Brussels, we've been engaging with political parties in the European Parliament and Commission. We've been with MPs and Lords Murray Hugh at Westminster. I've met with the Taoiseach, Nicola Sturgeon. We've been engaged in with foreign diplomatic corps across Europe and also with the international media. And our message is very, very clear. The electorate has now spoken. It's given the parties a democratic mandate in which to form a government and to get down to business and to help people. The Good Friday Agreement and power sharing is under attack and it must be defended. We were glad to welcome and to meet the US congressional delegation to Dublin and Belfast over recent weeks, who made it very clear once again their absolute commitment to the Good Friday Agreement and to the restoration of the political institutions. And we applaud their continuous efforts and contribution as a key partner for Ireland and for peace. If those elected uh, to serve fail to restore the democratic institutions, then it's not a case of direct rule from Westminster on the cards but it must be joint authority from Dublin and London. And if the people decide, Sinn Féin hopes to lead government from Dublin and Mary Lou Macdonald will lead such a government. So I'll leave you with this, friends. The political landscape is really rapidly changing and Change, the change that is afoot, it will ebb and flow, there'll be peaks and troughs and all of that, but it won't stop. And so our task as the National Sinn Féin Movement is to shape that change, to lead that change, work with others, bring people with us, bring about the societal change that the vast majority of people are impatiently waiting for in order to improve their lives and to give a new generation the opportunities that partition is denying us today and every day until that partition is history. Gurra Mayo.